It's time again for our weekly podcast on the campaign trail with Tea Party Express, where every single week we talk with conservatives from across the country who are stepping forward to help Republicans take back the Senate so we can start the process of rebuilding our country. This week, we travel to Oklahoma, where a special election is being held this year to fill the remaining two years of incumbent Republican Senator Tom Coburn's second term. One of the leading candidates to replace Senator Coburn with us right now. Please welcome T.W. Shannon. T.W., it's a pleasure to have you on with us uh, on the podcast. Hey, good morning, Mark. It's an honor to be here. Uh, Just for background purposes, T.W. serves in the Oklahoma House of Representatives, where until just recently he was the first African-American Speaker of the House in Sooner State history. Uh, He's a new generation conservative leader, has the support of Sarah Palin, Dr. Ben Carson, Red State, and GOPAC, and the Republican National Committee has named T.W. one of its rising stars, which a pretty impressive resume there. Well, I'll tell you what, we're excited, Mark. People, uh, conservatives from around the country and around the state uh, have recognized that if we don't unite, we're never going to take back the Senate and we're never going to take back control as conservatives. Again, it's going to take an army for the conservative message to get out. But with help from friends around the state and uh, with the right leadership, I think we can turn things around, and I'm excited. Well, and I didn't even mention that you started off your political career as a staffer for J.C. Watts and Tom Cole. Uh, What did you learn about the federal government back then that has prepared prepared you for this run for U.S. Senate? Well, you know, working for my mentor, J.C. Watts, who was the great communicator, J.C. always said, if you can't communicate, you can't meet. When, and back in 2000, uh, when I was working uh, for for Congress, we had you know we had record surpluses at the time, and we were a nation at war. Uh, it doesn't take very long uh, for people to to lose their way, and, and I think Republicans did. We we forgot you know the principles that had made us uh, successful in winning the elections, and that's why we lost the the races uh, in a couple following election cycles. But again. Uh, when we stay on our conservative principles like we have in Oklahoma, uh, people recognize that conservative principles are what lead to prosperity. And that's why I'm running for the United States Senate, hoping to, to succeed, you know, a stalwart of conservative movement and Dr. Coburn. Uh, you've been referred to, T.W., as the most conservative speaker of the House in state history. Let, let's talk about your record there. What, what accomplishment during your tenure as speaker are, are you the most proud of? Well, you know, we did a lot of things, Mark, that I'm, that I'm proud of. But number one, uh, we said no to adding more debt to the state of Oklahoma. Uh, in Oklahoma, we, we had, you know, it's so often it's so easy for a small state, much like it is in Washington, D.C., frankly, in tempting to want to just pull out the state credit card and meet the needs of the state. But under my leadership, uh, I said we will not go down the path of Washington, D.C., And we're not going to add debt to the future generations of Oklahoma. So we met our needs by balancing our budget and by not adding any more bond indebtedness. And we actually, by doing that, reduced our bond uh, indebtedness by almost $100 million uh, by not adding more. And, again, that's real money. Even D.C. standards, $100 million is a lot of money. We did that even when uh, the establishment was saying we need to add more debt. It's the only way we can do it. We've got a crumbling capital building. We've got to add more debt. We came up with the pay-as-you-go plan to make sure the government was living within its means. That's what we did. The other thing I'm proud of is we passed a tax cut. We were able to uh, pass a tax cut and have it signed by the governor to allow more Oklahomans to keep more of their hard-working money. And, again, this was going against the grain of where the rest of the country was going. When other states were raising taxes, because of our leadership in the House of Representatives, we were cutting taxes, and we've seen the results of it. That's why we have record, um, you know, record unemployment rates, uh, low unemployment, 5.4 percent, uh, some of the lowest in the country, one of the highest per capita income increases. Again, conservative principles are what lead to prosperity. We know that, and we need that same principle applied to Washington, D.C., T.W., I know you've been a very strong advocate for breaking the the crippling cycles of government dependency and generational poverty. How does that mindset develop, and and, and what can be done to encourage people who see government as the only answer that the real answer lies right within themselves? Well, Mark, you're exactly right. I mean, when I was elected Speaker of the House, when I was sworn in, um, I'm also the youngest Speaker of the House, the youngest uh, Speaker to ever serve in Oklahoma State history. And I had seen firsthand around the state what the crippling effects of government dependency do in a person's life. 
And uh, not only does it, you know, create a culture of addiction, but it robs people of their dignity. And that's why one of the first priorities I had as Speaker of the House was to fight for welfare reform, requiring that those that work, uh, that receive um, uh, TANF funds or receive food stamps have a 20-hour work week. Uh, hard work uh, is the best cure for government dependency, and there is no better social program than a good-paying job. And that's why we require food stamp recipients to have a 20-hour work week, and that program is being very successful now. And, again, it's about conservative principles leading the prosperity. That's what it's all about. We're talking with T.W. Shannon, candidate for U.S. Senate in Oklahoma. Uh, you started off your U.S. Senate campaign as an underdog. Now you're among the front runners. What, what are the issues, as you're traveling the state, you believe are drawing more and more Oklahomans to support you? You bet, Mark. You know, we've talked about this a lot on our website on TWShannon.com. Uh, we've listed out what we believe are the top issues. But there's no question that the number one issue on people's minds, uh, it, it is the crippling debt that the federal government continues to add, the borrowed spending, uh, the out-of-control um, spending that co Congress continues to put on the backs of the American people. Uh, and, again, people around the state, Oklahoma's a conservative state. When times get tough for us, you know what we do? We, we tighten our, our belts and we, and we prioritize what, what our needs are. We do that in our own personal budgets. And there's no reason the federal government can't do it. When you've got a $17 trillion deficit, that's $17 trillion, uh, that means that my kids and grandkids are going to be on the hook to pay for that for benefits they never received. Uh, they're paying for benefits that we're receiving. We, we will be, as Dr. Coburn's often said, we will be the first generation of Americans, if we're not careful, to pass along a lower standard of living. It's because we don't have politicians that will stand up and say, no, we're going to live within our means. We're not going to add more debt. We're not going to raise the debt limit. And that's why I'm running for the Congress, uh, for the United States Senate, rather, uh, is to, to restore fiscal responsibility. That's what it's all about. I'm going to return to a couple of things that uh, you've already mentioned, T.W., but um, let, let's talk about uh, a, another time where you demonstrated a willingness to stand up and say something that you know was, was, was right, for which you knew there would be consequences, standing up to the establishment, uh, you know, pushing back against the power brokers. Well, it, it, it happened last session. You know, as Speaker of the House, you have a tremendous uh, ability to affect policy in the state of Oklahoma. Um, and one of the challenges that we had, you know, Obamacare has wrecked, uh, wreaked havoc um, on, on personal budgets, on state budgets, uh, it has the potential of bankrupting our country. And so people are searching for solutions of how to deal with that. One of the solutions as a part of Obamacare that some had come up with was expanding Medicaid. And they, this proposal was put out on the table by others in the state government. And the idea was, was that, well, we could get more federal dollars to help our rural hospitals. Our rural hospitals need help. And certainly, you know, I, I believe in, 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 in rural Oklahoma, and I want to see rural Oklahoma do well. But the establishment wanted us to expand Medicaid. Uh, and, and the challenge is, after you look at the numbers, right now, Mark, one in four people in Oklahoma are already on Medicaid of some kind. That's one-fourth of our population is on a welfare program. We in Oklahoma, if we had expanded it, we would have gone from one in four to one in three people. Um, I look at the numbers, and I came out very quickly and opposed the expansion of Medicaid and said, we're not going to expand Medicaid. We're not going to add uh, more uh, people to the Medicaid roles because, again, I, I certainly believe in compassion, but I think we should define compassion not by the number of people we add to welfare, but the number of people we get off of welfare. That's what true compassion is. And so I said, no, I said, we're not going to do it. Uh, I was vilified in the newspapers about it. Uh, you know, you're always called a, a cold, mean, you know, uh, uncaring Republican when you, when you stand up for what's right. But I knew that, you know, adding more people to our welfare roles, that's never going to lead to prosperity. We need to be adding uh, people to the job roles. We need to be creating new jobs in the private sector, creating an environment so that the private sector can prosper. Because, again, we, when, we, when we think about the long-term future of our country, um, adding more government, if adding more government is the solution to your problem, then you're asking the wrong question. Well, yeah, that's... <laughs>
couldn't agree more with that. And let's let's also now talk about. Uh, you mentioned uh, the ongoing issue of uh, national deficit, uh, the debt ceiling deal that happened earlier this year. The White House may have gotten a clean debt ceiling increase this time, but my guess is that things likely won't be as easy next time around. If you're elected to the U.S. Senate, T.W., you're going to take office in 2015. The debt ceiling is going to be the first item on your agenda. How do you approach the negotiations there as a, as a, a junior senator? I don't know that there's anything to negotiate, Mark. I mean, we have a out-of-control uh, U.S. Senate, an out-of-control Congress, and a president that continues to trample over the Constitution. Listen, it's this simple. We are never going to get out of debt if we keep adding to the debt. Um, you know, voting to increase the debt ceiling only allows politicians to spend more money. We need to say no. We don't need to continue increasing the debt limit. We need to say no to it. And uh, we need to get our spending under control so that we don't reach our debt limit. T.W. Shannon is with us on the campaign trail with Tea Party Express. Uh, you're a big supporter of states' rights. Uh, is the federal government's consistent need to overreach one of the biggest reasons our nation has gotten so far off track from what the Founding Fathers first intended? Mark, there, there's no question. I mean, we talk about this in detail on our, on our website, pwshannon.com. But, you know, when I became Speaker of the House, the first thing I did was make it clear that we would not go down the path of Washington, D.C., and that we would push back against the federal intrusion that we see happening over and over into the personal lives of American citizens. Um, and we, we, we stood up for it. So I created uh, the first in the state, I think the first in the country, the State's Rights Committee, whose sole focus was to look at areas where we could push back against the federal government. And you know what? We did it, and we won on several accounts. Uh, one of those areas that we uh, focused on, we nullified Obamacare. Uh, the states have negated their constitutional authority to push back on the federal government time and time again. And it's part of the reason that we see such an intrusive, bloated federal government. Um, we, we pushed back in Oklahoma. In the House of Representatives, we nullified Obamacare. And again, um, we, if we're not careful, uh, the federal government is going to have a takeover of all of our uh, personal liberties. In fact, uh, what the states should be reminding the federal government is that they have enumerated powers as outlined in the Constitution, and they don't have the authority to get outside of those, and the states must hold the Congress accountable just like we as individuals should. Well, and, and speaking of the, the issue of the Constitution, and I know you're a, a, a strong defender of, of you know, that document, um, what, what do we need to do to encourage more people to really take a good, hard look at, at, at what our framers first intended and, again, to try to make sure that there's an accountability issue and, and even a transparency issue when it comes to what the federal government is doing and more specifically out of the White House to kind of bend around those, those rules? Well, we, the first thing we've got to do is elect leaders who obey and believe in this Constitution. And that's the first thing we've got to do is because uh, what we've seen time and time again are politicians who go to Washington, D.C., they take an oath to uphold the Constitution, and then when it's convenient, uh, they, they, they turn a blind eye to it. Uh, I've, I've been a leader in the state of Oklahoma uh, for several years, and I think if you look at my track record, I have a track record of defending our United States Constitution as well as our state Constitution, which we took an oath to do. And so it, it begins with leadership, Mark. We need people who are going to go to Washington, D.C., and not be sucked in to the seductive culture of the tax uh, consumers. The, the, I always tell our freshman members in Oklahoma and the legislature, uh, you know, that a, a unique thing happens once you become an elected official. Your, your, your uh, social crowd changes uh, if you're not careful because all of a sudden the people that call you the people that come to your office, the people that email you, the people that are walking the halls at the state capitol, they're good people, but make no doubt about it, they're tax consumers. They are not taxpayers. Um, they are the tax consumers. They live off of the machine, and, and the machine always wants to grow. And that's why we need leaders like Ted Cruz and Mike Lee who set, stand up and say no. And it doesn't matter party affiliation, but if it's not, if it's not uh, given within the Constitution, uh, they, they've stood up for it to defend the rights of the Constitution. And, 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 and I think that's why 
uh, we need more leaders that are going to stand with those guys to help them get us back on track. We are, I, I say this often, we are citizens of the state of the United States of America. We are not, uh, we are not subjects. One final question, T.W., uh, and, and this is something that we ask every single candidate on the campaign trail with Tea Party Express. Why should Tea Party members from around the country support your campaign for U.S. Senate? I have a proven record of standing up to the establishment and defending our constitutional rights. I'm sorry, our God-given rights. I have a, I have a record of saying no to debt, of reforming welfare, of cutting taxes, of saying no to Medicaid expansion, and nullifying Obamacare. And even more important than that, I have a record of doing what's right when nobody's looking. And I think that's why uh, people can feel confident that the same guy that I was in the state of Oklahoma as a leader, I'll be that same guy in Washington, D.C. I just need the chance to do it. And, again, for people who want to know more, we're at TWShannon.com, and we've outlined a myriad of the issues that we've had success on on defending our Constitution because that's what it's about. Is there social media opportunities to connect with you too, T.W.? We are. We're at um, we're on Twitter at, at TWShannon. And we're also on Facebook. So we, you, you can find us really easy. We've got a website, TWShannon.com, um, that lists all of those social media. And we're very active there. Well, it's great to talk to you, T.W., and best of luck on your campaign here. As we finish off our podcast with T.W. Shannon, who's running for U.S. Senate in Oklahoma, a part of our On the Campaign Trail with Tea Party Express podcast, where every single week we're talking with conservatives around the nation who are stepping forward to help us take back the Senate. Uh, and you can follow these podcasts on a regular basis. We have RSS feeds, uh, Android, iPhone, with, uh, of course, the uh, iTunes podcast subscriptions. And you can also go to our webpage, uh, which is very easily to find. Uh, it's www.tpartyexpress.org. 